Geeks and Gamers, Zack Snyder. Wow. So this thing to me is uh, worth commenting on because I think that uh, this is one of these crystallizing moments where you begin to see the, well, more clearly the factional divides starting to form across this country and where people are pinning their hopes on. And I believe that more and more the factional divides are are really becoming increasingly between those who depend on a corporate nationalist system for their livelihoods, for their prestige, whatever, and those who don't. <laughs> now, there are people that are in the those who don't camp that actually do still depend on the corporate uh, nationalists for their livelihood, but uh, they're they're becoming more and more willing to lose everything because the cost of associating with the corporate nationalists is becoming increasingly higher because, well, in order to stay in the fold of the corporate nationalists, you must toe the party line. And that doesn't mean that you just keep quiet. You have to do more than keep quiet. You have to go out there and you have to get your pound of flesh. You have to be willing to destroy human lives in order for your life to be spared. This is what happens in any type of revenge ideology and corporate nationalists. They rose to power using the vehicle of power of whatever you want to call it, social justice or critical race theory, whatever, whatever terminologies you want to use. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that's the vehicle of power that the corporate nationalists have, have chosen to use in an effort to consolidate their power here in America. And they can do so because corporate nationalists, and I want to I clarify what corporate nationalists are. These corporate nationalists, these are, these are people that are the, the owners and managers and vassals and dependents of, 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 of a certain type of corporation that derives most of its wealth, most of its power from overseas, from different parts of the world, predominantly, not exclusively, but predominantly, they derive their power from Chinese markets. And their end goal is, is not ideological, it's not noble, or, or, or even necessarily nefarious for the sake of nefarious. They're, they're not necessarily evil people looking to murder people. What they are is people in power who have removed the accountability in their lives. They have lost their sense of accountability to the world around them. They no longer feel compelled to be a good neighbor because they have, one, significantly more power than their neighbor, and two, they don't derive their power from their neighbor's approval anymore. These corporate nationalists are completely enmeshed and supportive of a government in China, for instance, that is that, that regularly persecutes, persecutes human beings for their race, for their belief systems. They go, I, mean, I, I, I don't think corporate nationalists really care if they're eviscerating Christianity, because Christianity, well, there are many different versions of Christianity, so not all versions of Christianity you can say this about. But at its core, if you read Scripture plainly, and you just keep reading it over and over again, what you're going to see is that Christianity is fundamentally a religion of, of poor, weak people. Uh, Nietzsche said it was a slave religion, and he's right, it's a slave religion. But that slave religion, what it does is it gives slaves a sense of dignity, a sense of, uh, I guess you say, an entitlement to a dignity in life that comes through their belief in Christ, that if that if Christ the Almighty was willing to die for their sins while they were yet sin, then who are other human beings to go around condemning human beings merely because of their their, their belief or their race or, or whatever it might be, or because they're poor? And this is mostly because you're poor that you're out of their club. So you have a group, you have 600 14, somewhere around 614 billionaires in America. Not all billionaires are alike, but I, can, I, I will tell you that 90 plus percent of them, 
that's <laughs> that's maybe maybe 60 out of 600 you might not say this about 90 plus percent of them they are completely beholden and dependent upon a system that allows them to consolidate power to eliminate power by by basically crapping on their own audiences they have to create content that pushes forth a an ideological revengetarian narrative in order to keep us contained but it's a it's a crappy product it's like christian movies it's, when you try to to put when you basically art Art has to have a certain open-endedness to it. It has to have a capacity for human beings to enter into it and to, to allow themselves to, to, to see themselves in the art. And I'm not talking about race identity. I'm talking about to see their thoughts, their ideas, that the potential for how, how they interpret that art and, and what that, that, that adds to their own lives in terms of their Un, uh, understanding of the world that there's a place for them to enter into that art. It's called negative negative capability is, uh, I think, uh, John Keats uh, coined the phrase. And what happens is when you try, when you turn art into basically agitprop propaganda, like Christian movies, they, they're agitprop. I mean, for the most part, I've, I've maybe seen two good Christian movies in my life. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> but on the main, their their focus is not on on providing an an entertainment service to human beings. Their their intention is first and foremost to put forth the gospel, and I'm not going to fault them for that. Uh, I mean, I'm a Christian. I I want to put forth the gospel too. But in terms of creating art, it's a terrible combination to to make your art about making the other humans in your in your image. This is essentially what propaganda is. Propaganda seeks to to make people in their image, and it, and it and it has to lie and obfuscate and and sanitize. The, I mean, the biggest problem with Christian movies is it sanitizes things to such a ridiculous degree. It's like eh, this isn't real life. <laughs> there's 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 nothing authentic about Christian Christian movies for the most part. And the same effect is true for quote unquote SJW movies. Their their purpose is not to provide a service for an audience that they need. Their purpose is to use this content to do a number of things, one of which is simply to establish that the highest level of 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 craft, the highest level of human expression validates this belief system that that is first and foremost what SJW art is intended to to communicate. It is intended to create a culture of expectation that this is the way it is, and they only do this if they feel that they, for one reason or another, they don't need your money, and they don't need your money because they get most of their money if they if they don't get most of their money on overseas, and most of that even amongst the overseas money, most of it's going to be China, uh, they will, and they hope to. And they see not only what they've gotten from overseas markets like China already, but what they could potentially get in the future. So now they're put in this position, this safe space, where they can afford to ruthlessly go after their own audiences, to use their platforms as platforms of propaganda to make human beings in their image. And I'm listening to Uche, uh, now in New Honora, I, don't, I can't remember how you pronounce his last name, uh, the, the, uh, the observant lineman. I like Uche. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a hothead. <laughs> he's a man who is highly emotional and highly proudful, and you could see it whenever anything happens that I've seen where his integrity might be held in question. His reaction is uh, mm, is pretty shrill, and I'm not faulting him for that because I'm I got the same I got a lot of same issues that Uche has to work out in my own life, so I'm not faulting him for that. But what I what I hope to to maybe the message of this video, the core message, everything that I'm setting up here, what I hope to get out of this. Is maybe if if maybe Uche, if you see this, my brother, I would like you to take a step back 
And I would like you to think about the full context of what happened on your show on this live stream. In this live stream, I'll just uh, give you the brief summary. Uh, they did a charity live stream for suicide prevention hotline, whatever organization in which they were going to have Zack Snyder. He's a uh, Justice League guy. He's created, you know, the release the Snyder cut. He did a version of Justice League and then his, uh, his, his daughter committed suicide. He's kind of taken out of the picture. And then Josh Whedon's version of Justice League came out and, and Snyder fans were like, who want to see the Snyder cut? And, and it was a big success for, for fandom that they, they actually, they did the Snyder cut and they were releasing the Snyder cut. And so Zack Snyder is coming on this stream to help raise money, and Geeks and Gamers is the primary brand that really built up the attention and drove the funds. And so Zack Snyder comes on the live stream, and he immediately says, uh, I disassociate with Geeks and Gamers. Also, I'm, and, and this, is, this is on the heels of this uh, mass shooting in which I don't know how many people died, but uh, a number of them were Asians. Maybe Asians were targeted. To, I don't know what, what is fact or fiction there, but... but whether Asians were targeted or not, uh, the perception is that they were. And so, yeah, perception is reality. So he comes on there and then he says, and I disavow hate of Asians and, you know, as a father of an Asian child and, you know, pulls the child card. How dare you question a man who's just appealing to a sense of decency for his child? I mean, that was a, that was a pretty rough card to pull there. And Uche called him into this. Uche set this up. Uche, a member of Geeks and Gamers, brought this man into this group. And then afterwards, there were people that were challenging Uche and say, dude, you set him up. Like, they didn't know that he was going to make this comment. They were broadsided. He said they gave him a warning, and they said, yeah, they sent something, but it was nothing like nobody expected this. Maybe the disassociation with Geeks and Gamers, that would have been fine. Maybe, well, it wouldn't have been fine, but it would be dope doable in and of itself. But to add that last part with, with the culture and the climate that we have, where, where these corporate nationalists will use all of their tools to target dissent from the narrative that keeps these folks in power, the narrative that essentially we're all horribly, all of us poors, all of us poors, we are ingrates, we are, we are basically Oh, we've lived a life that we haven't earned. All of the benefits in our lives, uh, as pitiful as they are compared to the benefits that these these uh, corporate nationalists enjoy, all of that, all all of that, uh, we should reject and we should condemn ourselves and we should live lives of perpetual sin, being being in a state of perpetual sin and perpetual repentance. That's, that's the narrative, and that narrative is intended to cut human beings off from competing with corporate nationalists. Of course, it is an appeal, it's an effective narrative, because it appeals to real needs in, in, in our society. Every society is going to have individuals that fit within certain groups that the society has deemed for whatever reason wor worthless enough to treat in a diminished capacity. And we got tons of those folks in America, long history of doing this. So it's, uh, it's Isaiah 32, 7. Uh, as for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even, and this is the key part, even when the plea of the needy is right. The plea of the needy, the plea of the people that support Black Lives Matter, that mostly come to the Black Lives Matter organization, because to them, Black Lives Matter is just police reform. They're there because police, well, <laughs> police never say no. Every time politicians write a, a new uh, uh, bit of legislation, the police never say no. The police have no stand. They've, they've demonstrated over and over again there is no thin blue line. Even the Supreme Court says the police don't even, they don't even have to protect us. They're not there to protect you. They're there to get revenue and to assure that their masters, the corporate nationalists, get reinforced and protected when their corporations their corporate nationalist corporations, not all corporations are corporate nationalists, uh, their, their corporate nationalist corporations, when, whenever they do something that, that should bring a righteous ire against them, the, the government will use the police and the military to protect these folks' interests. So Uche has brought the, the devil in their midst. And the devil is Zach Snyder, not, not, he's not literally a devil. I mean, 
he's he's kind of serving the role of the devil here, but he's not he's not the devil. I don't want to demonize Zack Snyder. He's just a man who was, well, I mean, he's a horribly flawed man, obviously. He's an afraid man, a scared man, and he's a just following orders man. You can't dispute that. And I I believe in forgiveness, even for people just following orders. But uh, I believe they, they should come to a repentance at some point, or they, they lose standing, and that's what's happened to him. But Uche brought this devil, metaphorical devil, into this world, and he basically, to all of the Geeks and Gamers team, he empowered... He empowered the corporate nationalists to use all their weapons of war to further seek to end the voices of these human beings, these poors. We are all poor. If you're not a billionaire in America, well, if you're not a millionaire at the very least in America, and, and I'll say that because Uche is a millionaire. I want you to remember that. If you're not a millionaire in America, you're poor. You're one of the poors. These are the poors. We are the poors. And Uche brought a, a devil into this group that, that used that quote-unquote opportunity to plant seeds of potential assault on individual humans. Ryan Cannell, Jeremy, all of them, they now have targets on their heads because Zack Snyder linked them to a shooting, to a mass shooting of Asians. That's what happened here. I don't really care. I don't care what awareness Zack Snyder had as far as uh, whether he knows the full ramifications of what he's done or not. And I don't know if Uche has realized it. I don't think he has. And I tell you, I mean, I, I want to forgive Uche. I'm hoping that he's repentant. I hope that he uh, comes back and uh, realizes what he's done. Uche, you are a multi-millionaire. A multi-million air you are one of them they brought you in you they they you didn't do them any great favor i don't think uche really exploded geeks and gamers in any way shape or form he's been a i like him i'm i i welcome i was happy when he came on board i like the guy i'm I, again with all the caveats that i put forward but i still like the guy uh, but you're the multimillionaire. You are the one with entitlement. You are the one with privilege. You are the one with real power, significantly greater than all of these folks combined. Because at the end of the day, Uche, if they decide to cancel you, you're good. I mean, maybe maybe your ambitions to have a big voice and have people listen to you, I mean, that'll be hurt. But for them, that'll be hurt as well as their lives. And these people have, have sons and daughters and husbands and wives that depend on their success to, for their quality of life to be at a certain level. And you just brought Zack Snyder in to, to give the corporate nationalists the ammo the unjust ammo that they need to go after their families. And they will. I'm already seeing things in here like, there's this one stream here, Movie Madness and Entertainment. I listened to just a part of this stream. And, uh, um, I mean, God bless them. These people are clearly, they've kind of bought the SJW whole narrative. And, and, and the whole narrative. I don't mean just the part. The part of the narrative is true. There is injustice in the land. The, the lie is that the SJW methodology will do anything to address any of the injustices in this land. It will just create more injustice than it already has. But you brought them in. This, 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 this culture of, well, this culture of convenient hate. Hate. You have created a situation in which leftists so-called leftists, and I, I believe these people probably are these so-called leftists that love their communism and their so and their and their socialism, that believe that that the left represents the little guy, but you've fallen for a narrative that essentially gives billionaires the moral high ground to be able to attack poor people and accuse them of being the people of privilege. And Uche, you're part of this. You have done this. You have sinned. You have committed a great sin, and you need to repent. You need to fall on your knees and realize who you are. You're just a man. All of that wealth that you have means nothing when you come before the hands of an angry God. And I think that you were, <laughs> you've definitely done that here. Uh, I mean, I've, I, I've, I've done that too, so I'm not, I'm not judging him. I just want him to, to repent and come back to the family and, uh, 
and realize what he's done. From your position of, of, of privilege, you have invited someone that has empowered multi-billionaires to use Fox News. Yes, Fox News is part of it. Fox News is controlled opposition. Stop watching all of them. Fox News, CNN, Washington Post, Amazon, Facebook, all of these corporate nationalist organizations. Well, they're basically corporate nations in and of themselves. And there's a coalition of corporate nations that, are, for right now, are all working together. But <laughs> that's not going to last. Trust me. At some point, these corporate nationalists are going to start competing with one another once they feel they've eliminated the pores from the potential to compete against them. And you've enabled that, Uche. And I guess my final word is, uh, Uche, well, first off, Uche, repent. I hope that you realize that what you did is you threw your poor friends under the bus. And they are significantly more vulnerable to the actions of these corporate nationalists than you are. All that you lose is your voice. They lose their virtual lives. Their quality of life is diminished. How much, how much do these folks suffer because of, of the great worry? You know what worry does to your health? Worry destroys you. It is a physical illness to, to, to have to be under the strain of uh, worrying about your existential potential to make a decent living for you and your family. That, that damages you physically. It shortens your life. These folks' lives are being shortened right now. And Uche, you play football. You should understand what it means to, to serve in an industry in which your life is being shortened. Because your life was shortened by playing football, and you know this. I mean, statistically. So I call on Uche to, to turn into yourself and remember before you were a multimillionaire. Put, your, put yourself into these people's shoes and, and come out in support. Basically, stop giving Zack Snyder excuses for just following orders. We could forgive people for just following orders. But we, we, we can't enable them while they are in the midst of doing that. We can't give them a yeah, but. There is no yeah, but. Zack Snyder chose. He chose to support an anti-American, anti-Republican, small r, not, not Republican government, anti-Republican, anti-Bill of Rights ideology of hate. That's what Zack Snyder did. Because he feared for his own career. He feared, even though Zack Snyder is millions of dollars. He, the only thing that Zack Snyder loses is his voice. He doesn't lose his life. His quality of life isn't going to diminish. Uche's quality of life isn't going to diminish if they cancel his voice. These folks' lives will be diminished because they no longer have access to make a decent living in the way that they were demonstrating that they were, they were able to do. And, and not because of, of their failure to meet the needs of an audience, of a market, but because uh, an unjust oligarchic market of corporate nationalism chose to destroy their lives with lies and half-truths and innuendos all so that they can keep the poors from competing with them. That's what this is all about. That's what this has always been about. You, 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 like I said, as for the scoundrel, Isaiah 32, 7, as for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. So Zack Snyder failed. Uche, you failed. And then the last thing I'll say is, let's remember, I mean, especially for my Christian family, that Christ died for us while we were yet sin. And remember, if you hate a human, then you've already murdered them. So we have all committed murder numerous times in our lives, we Christians. Well, all of us have, but I think we Christians, we recognize it. <laughs> we have all, we're all murderers. We're all rapists. And we're all the, whatever, uh, you, uh, in our hearts. But, but for Christ, in your heart is not enough. If you have looked upon a woman with lust, you have committed adultery. By Christ's standard, you're adulterers. You're liars. You're, 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 maybe rapists might be too strong. I don't know if you can have a rape thought so easily, but I'm sure some, some people out there probably are rapists because of, of, of the thought in their head alone. But regardless, you're murderers at the very least. That's one of the, that, that is the worst crime that you can commit.
in a civil society is to murder your neighbor. And we're all murderers, so remember that. We're no better than Zack Snyder. We're no better than the corporate nationalists. And we do not know, don't know, what would happen to you, me, my life? I've come to a consensual exchange kind of uh, sense about me. And it is not born because I'm righteous, because I'm better than you, because I'm more morally good. This came about because I have experienced disappointment, loss, diminishment. I have come to realize how it is that I must have neighbors willing to forgive me because I am a murderer at heart, as we all are. I mean, that's not the totality of our heart. We are also uh, givers at heart. We're also, we'll sacrifice ourselves for our neighbors at heart too. So we're all of these things. But you can't, don't let go of the fact that you're a murderer at heart. So I think that uh, for me, uh, I think standing up defiantly at that moment was the right decision. They all failed at that. I'm not judging them. I don't know that if I was in that position, that I wouldn't have done the same thing. I also don't know if I grew up at some point in my life, whether it was uh, early on or later at some point, and, and I don't know what will happen. If I, I, I haven't really had any fantastic long-term economic success. I've had various economic successful periods in my life, but long-term, no. So I, 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 I haven't been tempted with success. I haven't been tempted with an experience of real power like these corporate nationalists have, like Uche has. I have no idea if I would do any better than, than anybody else. If I was George Soros, born and experienced life as George Soros with my mind in my head, I am not sure that I am not George Soros in the end. I don't know. I'd like to think I wouldn't be, but I don't know. Do you think that you would not be Adolf Hitler? I don't think you really know that. And this is the, the most difficult part about uh, uh, for us as humanity, is to face our own evils within. And if you don't face your evils within, then it is so much easier for you to use moral supremacist, revengetarian ideology as a vehicle of power in your life. The more you realize that you're no better than anybody else, the less you are inclined to follow a revenge ideology in which you're going to have to condemn your neighbors for stuff that you do. Whether you do it directly or just in your heart, it doesn't matter. And if you're a Christian, it doesn't matter to Christ. What matters is your heart, the thoughts in your heart. So with that, I hope that, uh, I hope against hope that this can, can turn into uh, a moment of uh, so sobriety for Uche, because it would be tremendous for all of us, including you, my brother. It would be tremendously healing for you if you, could, if you could face your sins, if you could face your flaws, if you could face the injustice that you perpetrated on friends, your friends who took you in, your friends who took you in, the multimillionaire, you're the outsider, Uche. You're the one of privilege. And they invited you into their poor people world. And as a reward, you brought Zack Snyder to them. And when he destroyed, when he destroyed, when he's attempted, whether it doesn't matter whether he intends it, doesn't matter. He attempted, is attempting to destroy poor dissent from the corporate nationalist narrative. You should have stood up for your friends. That was your responsibility. Jeremy, I think he did the right thing by saying, hey, we're not going to react to this, and you know, we just want to keep this on uh, trying to raise money. I, I, I understand how it, maybe it was the right decision. I kind of waver on that, but maybe it was. I'm not sure. But Uche, you should have not listened to him. You should have been a leader. And that's one thing I don't see from you. I don't see a lot of strong leadership quality in you. You should have been a leader. And you should have said, no, you should have stuck up for your friends. And what you need to do now is repent. And if you don't believe in Christ, then, then just apologize to your friends. And, and openly. And make sure you make it clear. I made a mistake. I should have stood up for you guys. I brought him in. I was responsible for dealing with it when he went after my friends, especially given the tremendous power advantage that you have, Uche, over the rest of your friends. I think I'll end it there.